the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsmen and Billy Mills Orchestra. Maybe you noticed in Time magazine this week that Johnson's Wax is in the news again. Down at the Texas State Fair in Dallas, a young 4-H clubber was putting the finishing touches on his Hereford steer before parading him in the show ring. As a final thought, he brought out a can of, you guessed it, Johnson's Wax, and set to work polishing the steer's horns. Well, now, you probably don't have steer horns you want to polish, but the point is, a smooth, protective coat of Johnson's Wax also works miracles on a hundred different things in your home. Furniture and woodwork, radios, Venetian blinds, leather goods, and picture frames, to mention just a few accessories, shine with beauty when polished with Johnson's Wax. They're so easy to keep clean and bright. Try this wonderful wax method of housekeeping yourself. Johnson's Wax, paste or liquid, to bring out the beauty of the home. Look on the right side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of the home. Maybe statesmen and politicians would listen more to the voice of the people if smart people spoke up and the dumb people weren't so noisy. For instance, listen to an average citizen popping off as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. And another thing. If them so-called experts at the United Nations Conference took my advice, I'd clean up their troubles in two, two minutes flat. But no, they don't even answer my letters. Is that gratitude? Is that courtesy? Uh, is... What, uh, what is your plan, sweetheart? Just send all the interpreters home. That's all. <laughs> and then? Then when them delegates started calling each other names, nobody would understand what they were saying. <laughs> Take it from one who knows, kiddo. There's nothing more discouraging than losing an argument with yourself. Well, I think you may have something there, McGee, but uh, maybe if you gargle and take some aspirin, it'll go away. Don't sell me short, baby. It's a terrific idea. If they can't argue with each other, they, they, they've got to agree. That's simple, ain't it? Well, there's just one thing. How would you keep them from shaking their head? Turn out the lights. <laughs> well, you send them another letter, dearie. Send it registered mail. You bet. In the meantime, I've got to go upstairs and sort the laundry. Okay, Tootsie. Ah, there goes a good kid. <laughs> Steady as a rock and solid as a boogie beat. <laughs> Half the world in a turmoil, and what does she do? She sorts the laundry. Hi, <laughs> George, if everybody was like her, there'd be more clean shirts and less dirty linen, and... Ah, uh-huh. maybe that's a special delivery from Lake Success. Come in. Hi, Miss. Oh, hello there, teeny. To what do I owe the doubtful place? Hey, 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 what you got there? Well, it's a kitty cat. Oh. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Mm-hmm. I've always wanted a little kitty cat, but my mama says cats carry germs, but this one isn't carrying any because I held him over the garbage can and shook him, I bet you. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's a few germs between friends anyway? Personally, I think it's a wonderful thing for children to have pets. Well, so does my mama, too, but she says the trouble is when the pets start having children. <laughs> hey, he sounds like he's hungry. Oh, he can't be hungry, I bet you. No? I gave him a saucer of root beer and two chocolate marshmallows and half my bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> you did, eh? Yes, he was so hmm. I says you did, eh? Did what? Gave him all that stuff to eat. What stuff? A saucer of root beer, two chocolate marshmallows, and half your bubble gum. Well, you forgot the dill pickle. <laughs> I gave him that the very first thing. Well, I'm sorry. I'll remember that in the future. I'm not going to give him any more in the future. <laughs> it made him sick. <laughs> oh, don't cry, Raymond. I won't give you any more pickles. <laughs> Raymond, eh? That's a cute name for a cat, sis. I, I don't like it. Hmm? 
I think Raymond is a bomb name for a cat, I betcha. Well, then why call him Raymond? I have to. That's his name. <laughs> well, who named him? I did. Well, if you don't like the name Raymond for a cat, why did you name him Raymond? <laughs> I named him before I found out he wasn't that kind of a cat. I had a wonderful cat once when I was a kid, sis. Big striped fella. He was a bird cat. He was a who? <laughs> he was a bird cat. Always took him with me when I went hunting. Better than any bird dog I ever owned. I called him Sun. S-U-N, Sun. Oh, gee. On account of he was so bright, I bet you. No, on account of every night he'd disappear and wouldn't come back till morning. <laughs> Well, sir, I'll never forget one day. Ah, just... Now, quiet, quiet, Raymond. I don't want to hear it either, but we got to be polite. <laughs> well, sir, I'll never forget one day I was out after some quail. Boy, Toops had a brother in the Navy, and he said... Please. Okay. Quiet, Raymond. Well, sir, this bird cat of mine was sneaking on ahead, sliding silently through the brush like a little cloud of gray smoke. Uh... Suddenly, he disappears. I wait, and then I feel the tug at my pants leg, and there was sun. He looks up at me and jerks his head toward a little patch of woods. I takes the safety off my shotgun. The cat shakes his head. I was puzzled. See, me too, I bet you. In Raymond. <laughs> well, sir, the brainy little beast leads me to a little cabin in a clearing. There was a bench outside the door, and on the bench was an almanac. The cat jumps up onto the bench, wets his paw with his tongue, and starts turning the pages. Comes to a calendar and looks up at me. I looks at the page, and then I seen it. Seen what? Not seen, Teeny. Saw. Oh. I saw what the cat meant. The quail season didn't open till the next day. <laughs> that cat had saved me a ten-buck fine and maybe a week in the pokey. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, whatever became of him, mister, whatever, hmm, whatever. He ran away, sis, and I never saw him again. Unless... Hmm? Unless what? Well, a few years later, I passed a woman on the street wearing a funny-looking striped fur coat, just kind of flung across her shoulders. And as I went past, one of the sleeves waved at me. <laughs> well, that may have been just a coincidence. Gee, you think my kitty will ever be that smart, mister? I rather doubt it, sis, but let me have a look at him. I've been a judge at more cat shows than the chairwoman of a sewing circle. Okay. Here, Raymond, let Mr. McGee look at it. Yeah. Now, take it easy, Raymond. Hey! Hey! He's crashing! Hey, get out here, you little monster! Hey, Dad! Oh, he hey, ran out the door. Here, Raymond! Here, Raymond! Here, Raymond! Come on out, Raymond. Where is he, sis? Where'd he go? He, he went under the porch. Oh, sure. And saw your paw. Mm -hmm. He was the only kitty I ever had except Margaret, and he's a dog. Now, 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 take it easy, sis. I'll get Raymond out of there. I have to tear the house down. Oh, my poor little kitty. Poor little now, Raymond. Now, please, sis, please. What'll the neighbors think? <laughs> if I only had something to take my mind off of it, like, well, maybe 50 cents or something. <laughs> Oh, for the love of Pete. Here's 50 cents. Now pipe down. I'll get Raymond back for you. Promise? Absolutely. Okay. Then I'll go down to Kramer's drugstore and get a couple of banana splits. Hmm? Most women, when they got trouble, they go out and buy a hat. I buy banana splits. Thanks, <laughs> mister. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, Tina. Why, that little... Oh, well. Never break a promise to a child. Here, Raymond. Here, Raymond. Nice, kitty. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Dog gone it. Or, I mean, cat gone it. I better go and get my flashlight. Billy Mills to the orchestra, and I wonder who's kissing her now.
right there is where he ran under the porch, Molly. Yeah, you see? yeah. Now, you stand here, and when I flush him out, you grab him. You better put some gloves on. He scratches like a 1923 record of Isham Jones. <laughs> Well, all right, but... Oh, wait a minute, dearie. Here comes that nice Mr. Williams, the weatherman. Oh, we'll never get any place talking to him. He skirts a subject like Hattie Carnegie with a stylish stout. That guy is so... Hush, dearie. Hello there, Mr. Williams. Ah, it's Mr. and Mrs. McGee. Good afternoon, in a way. Hi, Williams. How's everything in the weather bureau? Cloudy Tuesday, followed by Wednesday and Thursday? Uh, unsettled, rather. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have information of a cold front moving in from the Pacific, which, if it meets high temperatures over the Midwest, might result in almost anything. (laughs) I would say, unofficially, that conditions are general. uh, Although they might change for the better, or worse, (laughs) it's difficult to say. Yes, uh, it seems to be. (laughs) By the way, Williams, what's your first name? In case I want to send the Weather Bureau a postcard. I find the government gives better service if you pester them a little. (laughs) My name is F. Ogden Williams. F. Ogden Williams. What's the F for, Mr. Williams? Uh, That was left indefinite, Mrs. McGee. (laughs) My parents just named me F. Ogden. I was to choose my own first name when I came of age, but... I've been unable to reach a a definite conclusion. (laughs) That I can believe. F. Ogden Williams, eh? You know something, Foggy? (laughs) You kind of remind me of my brother. He was a stocking salesman, but he was too bashful for the work. (laughs) Couldn't stand getting himself out on a limb. I see. I think. (laughs) Yes. Yes, I'm sure I do. (laughs) Well, I'm sure you must be busy. At least you seem to be making preparation for something. Naturally, I wouldn't know, for sure. Well, good day, probably. Mark my words, love boat. That guy is going to be an important man in the government one of these days. You think so, dearie? Yes, sir. Any guy that can avoid taking a stand on anything like he does is going right to the top. (laughs) Well, this isn't getting that cat out of there. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Here, Raymond. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. kitty. Well, he's under the porch, all right, but maybe not... Well, 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 what goes on here? And can you use another player? Why, hello, Dr. Gamble. There's a cat under the porch, and himself here is going in after Yeah, never mind giving me some expert advice, too, either, Tommy Thumper. Yeah. I took more cats out from under more porches than you took appendixes out of people with simple indigestion. Well, you know, uh, he promised the little girl across the street he'd rescue her cat, and he's going to do it, Doctor. I never break a promise to a child, Doc. Anybody that makes a promise to a child in the first place is a fathead, but I did it, and I got to make good. (laughs) You still under there, Raymond? Are you sure his name is Raymond? Sounds like an old girlfriend of mine. (laughs) Always hungry and always complaining. Well, doggone it, you'd be pretty miserable, too, if you were hiding in the dark under a strange porch, scared to death and with a busted leg. McGee, a broken leg? Why, you didn't tell me. That poor little thing, how terrible. Well, don't stand there like a goop, you sadistic little brute. Why didn't you tell me? We can't let that kitten suffer. Here, hold my medicine kit. When I get under the porch, you hand it to me. No, no, Doc. This is my job. Let me do it. On side, McGee. I've never doctored a cat before, but it'll be nice having a patient who won't try to tell me my business. I sure appreciate this, Doc. Out of my way, Gabby. Now, let me see. I better go in feet first in case there's no room to turn around. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. He'll ruin that suit. He can't hurt that suit. (laughs) He sent it to the Greek Relief three times, and they always send it back. How you doing, Doc? I'm all right. Hand me that flashlight. The Doc is a peritoneum in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but who's? <laughs> here you are, Doctor. Do you see the cat in there? Well, I'm getting close to him. He just walked across my back. Well, good, good. That's a pretty long walk for a small kitten, Doc. <laughs> 
Can't you grab him? Be quiet a minute. Let me look around under here. Oh, isn't this terrible? Has that poor little thing really a broken leg? No, I never said it had a broken leg. I just said the doc would be miserable, too, if he was under a strange porch with a broken leg. <laughs> You know Doc, always jumping to conclusions. Why, Fibber McGee, you just said that so he... Hello, Molly. Hello, pal. What's going on? Oh, hi, Junior. There's a cat under the porch. We're trying to get him out, Mr. Wilcox. Hey, have you got any more batteries for this flashlight, McGee? It's getting pretty dim. That's not a cat. That's Doc Gamble. (laughs) What's he doing under the house? He just bought a new foundation garment, and he's trying it out. Well, say, Molly, hold my coat, will you please? I'm going under that porch myself. Go ahead, Junior. And if you run across a fat little animal in there with an intelligent look in his eye, that's the cat. (laughs) Doc is the one with the flashlight. (laughs) Well, between us, we ought to be able to find the little blister. Hey, move over, Doc. I'm coming in. Hey, Doc, where are you? I'm way back here, Harlow. Just follow the buttons off my shirt. (laughs) Okay. Here, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. I think you ought to be ashamed of yourself, McGee. The idea of making those two men do your work for you. I didn't make them any do any such a thing for me. Besides, this will be good for Doc. Why? Well, work a little that tummy off him. You know, I was with Doc at a Kiwanis meeting last week, and they had a very good speaker. And when he got through, Doc just sits there. I says, why don't you clap your hands, Doc, I says. And he says, I can't. My hands don't meet in front. <laughs> Just to say, oh, here comes Mr. Wilcox out again. You didn't stay long, Mr. Wilcox. I know. Uh, hey, give me a lift, will you, pal? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> thanks. Hey, how far back does that porch go, Molly? Well, you can crawl way back clear under the kitchen, Mr. Wilcox. Why, Junior? Because this is something I've always wanted to do. This is a great day for me, what folks. What are you talking about? Well, look, for year after year, I've been telling people about Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, how it brings out the beauty of the kitchen linoleum with such little effort. Mm-hmm. How you just pour out a little glow coat, yeah. spread it around, let it dry for 20 minutes mm-hmm. or less, no rubbing, no buffing, mm-hmm. how it beautifies and protects the linoleum, yeah, how but... it makes house works so much easier, gives the little woman so much more free time. Yes, 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 yes. We know all that, but what that got to do with Great Day? Well, this is the first time I ever saw a kitchen floor from underneath. Oh. I wanted to find out if you could use glow coat on both sides of it, and you know something? I'd like to try it, just for fun. <laughs> Look, Waxy... You, uh, you ever think of giving up this work and going back into Chautauqua? (laughs) No, I prefer radio. You do? Yes, I can get to more people and fewer people can get to me. (laughs) Well, thanks for the look at the bottom of the floor, and I hope you find your cat. So long, Al. So long, dear. You know, McGee, we haven't heard a word from the doctor for some time. Yoo-hoo, doctor! Hey, Doc, are you all right? Yes, but I wish you'd keep quiet. This cat is frightened. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. Cats are high-strung animals, Molly. That's why they wind up as E-strings on violins. <laughs> I knew a fiddler once tried to play at a dog show. It was awful. Every time a pup would bark, his fiddle string would raise up in the middle like an oh hi old timer Hello there, Mr. Oldtimer. Hello there, kid. <laughs> what you standing out here for, <laughs> Well, there's a cat under our porch, Mr. Oldtimer. Oh, shucks, kids. You don't have to run out of the house just on account of a cat under the porch. They won't hurt you. I mind one time years ago, I lived in a swamp in Florida. Had crocodiles under the house all the time. One night, the biggest croc I ever seen come waddling right into my bedroom. A big croc, eh? Yep. Know who it was? Cousin of mine named Jess Fiddleford. <laughs> Always crocked in them days, Jess was. <laughs> You know, uh, I have an uncle with the same weakness, Mr. Oldtimer. My uncle, Dennis. <laughs> He's weak, all right. Can't even hold his foot up without a brass rail under it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I hear it. The way I hear it. What was that? The cat. Oh. Well, the way I hear it, one fella says to the other fella, he says, I hear that new army plane, the one that goes 1,500 miles an hour... I hear it killed a man the other day. Is that so, says t'other feller. Pilot, was he? Nope, says the first feller. Just a spectator. Tried to watch it go by and broke his neck. <laughs> Say, uh, Johnny. Yeah? About that cat. Uh, 
ever stop to think that motherhood is... Uh, I mean, maybe it was going to have some... Uh, what do you think? Well, it wouldn't matter. There's a doctor in attendance. No. <laughs> oh, that's good, kids. Well, see you later. <laughs> Kingsmen and Tallahassee. Tallahassee, when you see that kind of green and grassy, beneath the moon, bright beyond compare, when you hear blue jays chirping high and sassy, and catch one sniff of southern cooking hanging on the evening air. When you see folks at home all polite and classy And every smile you see bids you stay and rest Get off that train, go to Tallahassee From Southland that is very best when you see land out of the window of the train, kind of green and grassy, how in the world can you complain? Beneath the moon, you ought to see the way it shines, bright beyond compare, the way it shines upon the plain. When you hear blue jays chirp, kind of high, kind of sassy, Get that whip of southern cooking floating on the air. Supper's on the table. When you see folks having their after-dinner chat, all polite and classy, gentlemen all remove their hats. And every smile, every harmony and peace, did you stay and rest? And the porter, your valise, get off that train. The doctor would come out from under that porch. He's been there half an hour. Uh, if I couldn't find a cat any quicker than that, I wouldn't call myself a doctor. How are you doing, Doc? Give me five more minutes, children. By that time, I'll either have a cat or a collapse. <laughs> here, Raymond, here, here, here. You know, McGee, I think he's really enjoying this. Why, sure he is, and why not? No telephone calls, no nurses rushing in and out with their starched uniforms scratching up the interns. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Doc spent a little time under our porch every afternoon. <laughs> well, nobody would be more welcome under our porch, I'm sure. The doctor is... Oh, look, McGee, here comes Mr. Wimple. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Oh, hi, Wimp, old man. <laughs> Hello, folks. <laughs> Why, what are you looking so perturbed about, Mr. Wimple? I'm, I'm looking for a place to hide. Yeah? Sweetie Face is after me again. Oh. Sweetie Face, that's my big old wife. <laughs> Yeah, we know, Wimp. What's she after you for this time? Well, it was just a misunderstanding, Mr. McGee. Yeah. She objected to the way I was drying my fish line. Well, isn't that ridiculous? What difference does it make how you dry your fish line? It made quite a difference to her, Mrs. McGee. You should have seen her tumbling down the stairs. <laughs> tumbling down the stairs? Yes. It seems I had my fish line sort of stretched across the top of the stairs and she tripped over it. <laughs> to think I have done it deliberately. <laughs> well, after all, she might have been seriously hurt, Mr. Wimple. Yeah, she might have been, but the fish line broke and she didn't trip very hard. Oh, I have a stronger line someplace, but I simply couldn't find it. <laughs> What'd she do after she took the header, Wimp? Chase you out of the house? <laughs> no. <laughs> I ran up in the attic and I hid in the trunk. Oh. Our trunk is full... Our attic is full of oh, trunks. Boy. Yes. And she knew I was in one of them, so you know what she did? She locked every one of them. Heavenly days, including the one you were in? Yes. <laughs> I almost died laughing. You see, I had taken the bottom out of all the trunks long ago. <laughs> well, that's smart work, kid. Yes, but i better get out of sight. May I hide under your porch? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wimple, but Dr. Gamble is under there now. <laughs> he is? <laughs> My goodness, I didn't even know he was married. <laughs> Some other place, then. Thanks, get away, folks. Ah, uh, 
greatest living dodger since Cookie Labajetto. I'll bet he... <laughs> Oh, you didn't, Ah, here, here, Doc. Let me take him. Come to Uncle Fipper, Kitty. That's it. I got him. Give me a hand, somebody. There. There. Ah. Here you go. Thanks, Molly. There. Nice to be out of there. Next time the coal miners strike, I won't be so unsympathetic. Well, we certainly thank you for all your troubles, Doctor. Yeah, great work, Doc. Took you long enough, but it was great work. Now, about that broken leg, you little... <laughs> now, wait cat. a minute, Doc. I... I can... Oh, hey, here comes Teeny. Hey, Teeny, here's your cat. Come on, Teeny, come and get him. I told you I'd get him for you, and we did. How do you like that we? <laughs> Hello there, Teeny. Here's your cat. Hi, Dr. Gamble. Hi, Miss McGee. Hi, Mr. McGee. Well, here's your kitten, Teeny. Give it to her, McGee. Now, here, sis. Come on, take it away. Hmm? Take it. Take your cat. Get it out of here. Oh, that isn't my cat, Mr. McGee. What? No, I was just playing with that thing for a while this morning. Oh. I don't want the dirty old thing. <laughs> well, I gotta go home now and feed my doggy. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for the banana splits, Mr. McGee. Why, that little... <laughs> I, uh... <clears throat> Say, Molly, may I use your bathtub? Why, sure, Doc. Help yourself. You know where to find the soap and towels, Doctor. I'm not going to need soap and towels. I just want to drown your husband after I break his leg. Now, I, now look, I'll look, I can explain. Now, you wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't strike a man with a kitten in his arm. <laughs> <laughs> Liver and Molly return in just a moment. I don't know how you keep your furniture clean and polished, but I've heard that some women are still doing this job the hard way. First they clean with soap and water or some other cleaner, then they use a polish, do two operations, in fact. Well, now, obviously, these women haven't heard about Johnson's Cream Wax, this newest Johnson's Wax Polish, both cleans and polishes furniture and light-colored woodwork in just one application. Yes, wonderful Johnson's Cream Wax combines two cleansing ingredients with genuine quick-polishing wax. When you apply this creamy white liquid, dirt and fingerprints seem to melt right away. Furniture fairly glows and sparkles, stays bright longer. And listen to this. Johnson's Cream Wax doesn't contain one single drop of dust-catching oil. The protective finish it gives your furniture and light woodwork is hard and absolutely dry, so dusting is simple as could be. Try it. Johnson's Cream Wax. It's wonderful to bring out the beauty of the home. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of the home. Now. Got to run down to the newsstand, Molly. Be right back. What's all the hurry? Dinner's almost ready. I got to get a magazine. Somebody told me there's an article about us in this issue. Out today. Hey, you got any change? No, I haven't. Oh, never mind. I'll charge it as usual. The newsstand guy don't like it, but he does it for What me. magazine has our pictures in it? Look magazine. Hey, why don't you come with me? While he gives me a dirty look, you can grab a clean one, huh? <laughs> don't you get it, Molly? It ain't funny, McGee. It ain't? Well, it's hard to hold that terrific pace right up to the end. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night! This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.